Well, it is 5.01 on Monday, April 17th. The Board of Commissioners of the Hardwick Electric Department is meeting. Um, Commissioners Ambrosino, O'Connell, Smith, and Gedankin are here, as are Mike Sullivan, Beth Essery, Ken Nolan, uh, Eli Emerson, and uh, was it Bob Fairbanks and Stu Somebody? Yeah, Stu Arnold. I didn't catch your last name. I'm sorry. S Stu Arnold. It, yeah, it's Stu Arnold, and it says Dave Kelly, but it's uh, I can change that. That, that's 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 okay um so we have a quorum um roger i know is not going to be here um and uh are there any modifications to the agenda not now okay i would suggest that we move uh that we come back to um the slot that we had for for dave mitchell um if he shows up later um are there remind, any other modifications i just want to remind you lynn that i have to leave at five minutes of seven i remember okay and hopefully we will finish by then good but i can't be assured that we will um we'll try um are there any other modifications to the minutes to the um, agenda you mean not the, the thank you the agenda um is there a motion to approve the uh the agenda so move make a motion we approve the agenda okay any objection hearing none the agenda is approved uh which takes us to approval of the minutes from um excuse me uh the meeting on um the 20th of march are there, uh, is there a motion to approve? So move. A sec second. Is there a second. Any discussion? Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the minutes are approved. Um, we don't have the minutes from um, Mike. Yeah, um, the, the agenda that you're working on, Lynn. Yeah. Just missed a that was a draft and Beth was too fast for me. The actual agenda had another public item and that was for Nat and wake boats. And I think that's what Stu and- I uh, have that. Oh, you oh, do have it? King okay. No, no, I'm sorry. I had Kingdom Games. Okay. Yes, we, we said that it should be on there, but I didn't see it. Okay. Well, why don't we put, since uh, are the two gentlemen here, here about, um, the wake boats or yes yes so then why don't we um take that up next are, are you ready to go on that did we finish the uh minutes well we don't have the minutes um because i needed to get beth a bit more information okay. from uh the executive uh the uh, meeting that we had that was a special meeting um uh, a few weeks ago so, so I mean the wake the wake boat proposal is very simple. Basically, we want to ban wake boats uh, from all the lakes smaller than Lake Champlain. And the reasons I as I wrote are obvious shoreline erosion, danger to small boats uh, and people on them, and uh, paddle boats and small kids swimming. And there's a considerable danger increased danger of uh, milfoil and and other badness coming to small lakes because these wake boats can move around from lake to lake I... but um what 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 we want to do is is have this notice that i have here wake boats are prohibited pending vermont department of environmental conservation rule promulgation because the v department of environmental conservation is is working on and proposing various rule changes and in the long run we don't know what they're going to do but we want to kind of join a number of other lakes and saying right now no and we think that because the hardwick electric owns the <clears throat> the so-called public access that we can put up such a sign and say no and if there's some legal problem with that we'll deal with it when somebody okay. Nat, 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 are, have you made a motion yeah okay um, Okay, okay, and there needs to be a second before, because you've launched into a discussion 
Well, okay. Uh, Is okay. there a second? I'll second. Okay. I'm sorry, Nat, but I I just okay. want to. Well, I mean, given okay. the time, so so you want to sign. So we would we want to sign saying no. We don't think that anybody is going to challenge this. Uh, we're not sure there's more than a handful of wake boats coming to Caspian, but they're potentially dangerous. And you know we'll deal with whatever happens next. Next. So um, that's, what we want is th is permission to put up this sign. Well, you know you're not looking for permission to put up a sign. You want Hardwick Electric Department to put up a sign. It's a difference. Oh, okay. I same thing to me. I mean, well, you, we're I, setting I, a policy. We're setting a policy. I, I make a motion that we ban wake boats from Caspian for the foreseeable future, and we add a sign that says "No wake boats allowed." We, we order have we have no authority to department. ban wake boats from the from the lake. Okay, <clears throat> let's be clear on this. We can we can ban wake boats. I and I don't know if we can if we can ban them from. If it's a public access, well, I don't know it, what. Is it a public seeing. access? We own that land. It's not a public access. It's just not listed with one of those signs that. Well, it's not owned by Fish and Wildlife. No. No. Okay, so we can we can <laughs> presumably then stop someone from coming on, but we can't ban the boats from the lake. This is <laughs> that, that's why we're. What we're saying is we're asking the person who is hired uh, to monitor during the summer the access to the lake and to to stop all wake boats from coming on. There won't be many, if any. Uh, and if somebody fights them, then they can report them to the sheriff or the town or whatever. So we're saying wake boats cannot enter through this, uh, this entrance. Prohibited pending Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation. Has has anyone consulted with council? We have yeah. council here. I don't know if this is within your bailiwick, Eli, but um, whether we, we can- we, we uh, I recall Mike mentioned- What was that again, Eli? Sorry, Mike mentioned one thing. Uh, Mike mentioned one thing about this and I'm not even, I don't think it was specifically about the sign or anything. Um, but no, I have not, not looked into it, um, and I don't know it off the top of my head, so I'm happy to. I just need but, some time. Um, our position, Lynn, is we want to say no, and if somebody challenges us, then we'll spend money on, on legal counsel or whatever. So you're speaking as, 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 a, as not as a commissioner right now. I mean, w w our responsibility is to the electric department and the ratepayers. I don't want white boats on the lake. Let me be clear about that. But that's, so there needs to be, from my vantage point, some connection to the electric department if the electric department is going to be taking a position on it. Now, if these boats are going to damage our property, they if could. they're going to- Erosion, then, erosion of the of the shoreline, including that part near our dam. It surely can't help the land, the shoreland, shoreline. Will there be? There, we there, have, are, there are other people here from the public. I would like to invite them to speak since they came for this purpose. Yeah, this is Bob. Um, I, go ahead, Bob. And, and uh, I'll just make the uh, one opening comment and still, I think, is prepared to address a lot of what Nat has said. But if our position is based on the fact we believe is true is Hardwick Electric owns the land at the public beach and at the boat launch. If they are owner of land, they can ban through their ownership, they can ban use of that property for any purpose, any reason. It's just like you can ban somebody from coming onto your front lawn. You're the no, owner. it's not. No, it's not. We're a public. We're a public entity, and I don't believe that we can just ban for any reason. That's not to say that we can't do something here, but I just want to be clear that I don't think we can just ban for any reason. Some people dis. Some some lawyers disagree with you actually on that, Lynn. 
I think I've seen so, it. Well, I, I asked, I, have you bought legal I, advice from this now? No, I don't want to pay for it right now. Well, I, can I finish what I was going to say? Please. Just, so it's clear why we're here. If If you can ban anybody or anything, Okay, I, I say if, if you can, then you can ban somebody from coming across the boat launch into the lake. You're absolutely correct. You cannot ban the use of weight boats on the lake. It's, but you can ban access. Um, it's just like anybody else, any other property owner around the lake who has lakefront, they don't have to allow, they don't have to allow anybody or everybody to come across their property. They can have permission, but they don't have to allow uh, anybody from coming across. It's, it's the same principle. And if somebody comes, if somebody has received notice, and we will take, if you approve this, we will take care of the notice. And that has a, a we'll meet the legal requirements for notice. If somebody receives notice, or notice is properly given, and they, <laughs> violate that notice, then the remedy is a, trans a trespass action. Call the sheriff, they come and they cite them and they end the court because they violated your right as a property owner to manage your property as you see fit. Now that's common law. Now, I'm not aware of any, any uh, I know, I understand you're a public entity, but you're not a public entity for fishing or for um, uh, other use of the lake, your public entity to provide power. And it's, it, so I don't know. I I believe that you can do this. Um, and, and Stu, if you want to jump in, or anybody else want to jump in, and it would be for the purpose of until the state makes some sort of a decision. The problem is it's probably going to be two years from now. And Stu knows more about this, but it's probably got, not going to be until the fall of 2024 that whatever they're going to do gets done. So it's going to be at least two summers where the lake would be open. There are no regulations right now except for some general uh, shoreline setbacks. There are no regulations w which would uh, address the concerns that hundreds if not thousands of people around the state are addressing for the for the for their own um for their own ponds and lakes so and the state looking into this and has a petition before it right now um so this would this would could be a temporary probably be a temporary and if somehow we're wrong or we abuse that right that you may give us um you would have you would have free your freedom to withdraw that that uh, that permission at any time, because you're the landowner, you can prevent us from using it. So, Mr. Arnold, did you want to say something? I'm I'm mostly here to back up the the year and a half that the state has been involved in a petition to regulate the boats and the wake boat sport. Um, there, very likely, the timing on that is um, it's in rulemaking now. Um, uh, or in committee, uh, legislative committees to be ready for probably a July um, yes to that. Um, but then they'll probably set a date for next May when the lakes come back up from the winter next um, in 2024 or start on this regulation. But that's gonna regulate the boats, not to, not ban the boats. And Caspian will, is big enough to handle what they're calling for volume uh, of a lake. So um, what we, what we're also as a lake in the community, the little Greensboro Select Board, the Greensboro Association uh, are actively pursuing its own petition um, that will outright ban, similarly to our jet ski ban, uh, the personal watercraft ban that, that we have along with about five other lakes in the state. Um, so, and that's kind of the basis of our ban on wake boats is that, we want that same basis that we got for jet skis to be applied to Caspian. Um, the, the reasons are safety, the reasons are the water quality, and the reasons are as Nat spoke out. Um, but this is another approach because of your ownership of our boat access. It's unique kind of, 
uh, because most are controlled by fish and wildlife. And so the state doesn't have that same benefit as you do to do this. Mike and Priscilla, did you want to say something? Can't hear you, Mike. You're frozen. How about that? <laughs> Better. I mean, we could, a simple sign saying we don't allow wake boats to go through our property isn't difficult to do. We could get a quick legal uh, opinion on it. But how many wake boats do we have last year on the lake from other access we, points? We, we have, uh, we had one come for three weeks. Um, it's a regular user of the lake. Um, they own a cottage. Uh, they generally use it as a water ski boat. Um, but if they have the right family member or, you know, they, they'll go in the middle of the lake and they'll, they'll zing around on it as a wake boat. Um, they have not been a, an extreme personal hazard that them themselves. Uh, we've had instances, very few, maybe two or three in the last two to three years. Um, we're, but the, the, the key that we have, uh, we have greeters there at the beach. Uh, if you guys grant this authority, uh, we could um, let people know they're not law enforcement, so they can't stop somebody, but the greeters can um, say, hey, if it's prohibited here, go find another lake. And it could just stop the few that will come this year. And hopefully a year and at least two years out, we'll have an outright ban that then could be supported by state police and um, the game wardens. So do people and, usually come to our boat launch and then leave the boat at their cottage? For the weeks that they're there? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and so that's the other threat is where's the boat coming from and the ballast tanks can't be completely emptied. Um, you can ask an owner to, you know, do a 14 day, um, you know, drain it as best they can and do a 14 day uh, non-use kind of thing that, that does help kill the invasive species that are in the ballast tank. Um, but there's, you know, so there's, there's, there are some decontamination efforts that, um, that uh, that'd be another thing to talk to you guys about um, if I could put that in to a two minute request um, after, but um, the, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to see if we can get resolution on this part. But this isn't necessarily related to Hydro Electric's role, but are these boats easily identifiable? I mean, ballast tanks can be internal. And so how's the greeter going to know if it's a wake boat? The, the wake boat has structure on it that um, allows it to uh, point its stern downward. Um, that's partly the weight of the ballast, but it's uh, also got some fins and things. It's, it is generally observable to determine that. that. Um, and a simple question can be asked of a, uh, is this boat, wake boat sport capable? You have a greeter training day. Yeah. I think there are two things that I'm hearing. One is a sign. Actually, three things. One is a sign. One is a person saying something to people. And I heard somebody talk about notifying the sheriff and bringing trespass actions. And I'll take the last one first, in my view. Um, I don't think it's in our ratepayers' interest to have litigation over this. I don't think that's our business. And I would be strongly opposed if, if the effect of having a sign or having a greeter say anything is that somebody's going to call the police, um, then, then I am utterly opposed, despite the fact that I don't want to see white boats on the, on, on the, on the lake personally. Um, but I think our responsibility as a commission is is um, is to our ratepayers as a whole, and not to get them embroiled in something that really has nothing to do with the supply of electricity. So that's um, Fine, in we... terms. And I, let me, let me finish, Nat. Okay. Um, in terms of a sign, um, if there is a. You said there's a rulemaking going on right now. If we have a citation for it, I would want the citation um, included in the sign so that people know what it is precisely that is being discussed. Um, 
Yeah, I think that's the the, the crux, the, the, the current petition that's in front of the state, which will probably be passed, uh, will regulate the sport, not ban it. And, and Caspian will be in the 17 lakes that will be eligible for the sport to be participate. Um, it'll be dead middle in the lake in a very T-shaped teardrop at the bottom because um, it'll have a thousand, you know, up to a thousand foot from the shoreline. Um, so the sport will be regulated to the middle of the lake. Um, the, so that I guess that, so it won't stop them and it may actually increase potentially where, you know, no lakes can ban them at this point in time due to uh, depth of water or shoreline. So that's not my question. My question is this notice that, that Nat circulated says, wake boats prohibited pending Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation rule promulgation. I'm asking, is there a rule promulgation pending? Because it sounds to me when I see that as suggesting that there is. If there isn't, then I think the wording maybe needs to be tweaked. Um, uh, and, and then not to sound talking about rule promulgation, um, the department has put out a proposed rule, but it's not a promulgation at this point. Uh, it's preliminary. Next year, they're proposing to put out a proposal and vote on it. So we're trying to just say now, not on this, not through this access. That's all. There is a drafted proposed rule. But there's, yes. no, there's, there's, no, there's no proceeding, there's no... There's no docket or anything. My understanding is it's not on the docket now, Stu. Is that that's right? They're waiting for the fall to but, make a formal one. No, no. The current position for regulating the sport is in process, and it, the timing is right now. It's going to go to um, ICARS, and then uh, this month in May, and then there'll be a public hearing, one final public hearing, and then it will go to LCARS. After it goes to LCARS, which is the legislative committee. Uh, it'll be it'll be approved. It's likely it has the backing of the the um, uh, Julie Moore and uh, from the from the state, it, and it's been looked at through Phil Scott's office as well. So as it's written right now, it it should pass. Um, and the and but that will mean they're going to set the date for it to become effective, probably May first next year. Um, so that it won't affect this summer's um, boating action. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm and, still confused. I'm still confused. Is there? Yes, the answer is. Is yeah. there a number? Has, has has a petition been filed, and has that opened some kind of a proceeding? And and is I, I thought I was just hearing now the legislature. Is it before the legislature, or is it before? That who's who's going to decide this? The final decision is LCARS, which is a combination of House and Senate committee people that will determine its acceptance. Um, it will likely, it seems like it's likely, it's been through multiple public hearings last summer, again this uh, winter, and it's fine. It, so it's, the petition has been reviewed, it's been redrawn drawn up a couple of times, and now it's in its final form. And so it's ready to become, uh, a, you know, it affects statute. This isn't a rule. This is a law. Yes, if, it will if be. It's, a... if, it's, if it's if it's in the legislature. No, I, can I, it, if this is the process for administrative adoption of rules, the agency has a process where they have public hearings, they develop the rule. The last step of the process is it has to be approved by the legislature before it can... Oh going to effect but this is I see. okay this is administrative rule. so it is a proposed rule right and 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 at the same time we're we are at the caspian drawing up a separate petition um that we'll have in their hands in the next month uh that will outright ban the boat and the sport on the lake um so that won't probably get through ruling uh like this other one took you know, most of last summer to get to where it is today. Um, hopefully it'll happen a little faster and maybe we can meet the same May 1st deadline um, uh, for 
an outright ban. But what we what this what this approach here is tonight is about. Can we? I understand. I understand access? what it is. We, we we're 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 into twenty five minutes on this already, and we have a full agenda. Um, I think we need to have specified wording i cannot support the wording that was proposed by nat well i got it's talking about a rule promulgation and and something that's pending and it sounds to me like that's where it's pending and what's pending is not at this point is not entirely clear well maybe i can jump in and help um it's it's pending it is, as Stu points out, it's been pending for a year and whenever it was initially brought up, it's been pending. I'm sure there's some sort of docket number or file number or something that we could get you. Um, that would it, be great. It, that would be great. Then we should put that in, in, in the sign. That's all I'm saying. Let me, so just, people... let me explain one thing. And, and if that's, yeah, we could probably do that. My, my concern is with that is, is it's a, a different issue um they are considering uh setbacks depth of the water and those sorts of things all we are proposing is that hardwick electric as owner of the property not allow lake boats to cross into the lake at the point where the the normal boat wash is and i so, understand and sir so, i understand what you're saying but that's yeah. not the language that nat proposed well, I understand that. I understand is, that. But... I can adjust that. We can adjust that. That's fine. But what what I'm concerned about is is that if somebody goes and looks that up, which they may very well, um, uh, they read the uh, the petition that's pending, and they're going to say, "Well, what's Harder Electric got to do with this? You're the owners of the land. That's what gives you the ability to do this." not because you're a public utility or not, not because you're part of any petition. You're the- but our, our responsibility is as commissioners of the utility. Yeah. And, and, and that's, 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 that we have to look at things through that lens. That's my view. Uh, others may disagree with me. I'm, I'm quite certain that Nat Great. does on this. Um, and I, I don't know about the other commissioners. Um, Mike, you got your hand up. Mike? Yeah, so just listening here, and Lynn, I think you nailed the important thing that the, sp the perspective that the commissioners need to be considering and looking at is HED and the ratepayers. And from those two perspectives, the two things that I've heard to me as a utility professional that are pertinent are public safety, because everything we do in operations and in our business, we are concerned with public safety. Absolutely. So if there's a public safety issue with these things on the lake, that's something my commissioners could hang their hat on. The other thing is protecting the Caspian property from damage, which we've had some bad erosion problems there that I've had to go fix and they've cost us some good coin. We don't want that happening either. So if we have some data from you all that the commissioners can say, oh, okay, here's data, data about safety. Here's data about erosion from these boats. We're not going to allow them because they could harm the public or they could harm our property. Then we're not getting into the political circles of somebody making a rule or supporting the wrong rule or the right rule or any of that stuff. That's my two cents. And I think we've had issues already with damage to the dam and having to do repair work. This is not going to make it better. So it could just be damage and public safety. Is there any I don't, I, I, Nat, would you withdraw your motion? And I would like to make another motion. No, I don't want to withdraw it. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with it. Well, then, I, then, then I, I'm going to. Is there further discussion on it? If not, I'll call the question. I, I am opposed to the motion. I, I, I think we could have a notice, but a, it would say something else. Okay. What, what, what? Um, do you want to put this off to May? I mean, 
Let, let's hear Lynn's motion before we put it off, because it'd be good to get this behind us. Yeah, I, I don't want to spend another half hour What's the motion? this. The motion would be uh, to have a sign that says, notice wake boats are prohibited from using whatever we call the boat access, the boat ramp, due to concerns about public safety and shoreline erosion. And just leave it at that. No, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll withdraw mine and accept that. If you, if you would, if I would ask that there would be the statement that per the uh, act, per the decision or whatever of the uh, Hartwick Electric uh, Company or uh, uh, department's uh, board of commissioners. Well, I don't know what that whether you have to say per, per Hardwick Electric Department or Hardwick Electric Department well, commissioners. Uh, I think it's it's fine to say it's per the Hardwick Electric Department. It doesn't have to say Board of Commissioners. It's it's the Electric Department would put up a sign and that would that would say what I just suggested if if there's support for that. And sure, okay, I'll I'll support that. We can we can do the exact wording later and make sure that you know it's it's okay with no everybody. no we're going to vote on the exact now. wording because I don't want to hear about a sign that, that that's that's getting into other things that that just create a storm about something else. I second the wording you proposed, Lynn. Okay. Beth, did, and, but we have it in the recording, right, Beth? I think so. We should have it in the recording. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All of those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Yep. I, I, I don't Hi. see anybody. <laughs> Three hands are up. If people are frozen, are you voting, Vince? Yeah, yeah. You hands up. You can't see. Three hands up. Okay. No. no, you're you're okay. okay. So so the, the motion passes. Um, I would. Okay. Thanks. No, there's one more thing here, and that is that I don't want anybody, and I think, I, I hope there's unanimity on the board uh, that that no one from, from the Greensboro Association's Beach Committee is to be getting into any kind of discussion with anybody. Because I don't want to hear about a fight breaking out or no. police being called. Okay. The sign is there, that's, that's the only thing that I'm supporting. And if people decide to ignore the sign, they ignore the sign. Okay, Stu. I appreciate your uh, what we got here. I I really think that'll it'll stop traffic um, of the late. I think people will honor a sign, um, and those that don't, you know, will 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 just log it. And and this yep. will be good data for us to, you know, for our band. And and it also gives support from you um, <clears throat> to outright ban these um, boats on our lake. Um, and I appreciate that very much because we'll need that as well as community support and political support. So we'll Thank tell you. Isla Hunt and the Beach Committee, you know, just you know, this is a sign, no conversation about it. Just no access, that's all. Should we do a public notice before it even comes to summer so some guy doesn't show up with his boat that he rented a house for a month and he can't put it in? And no, he said, I didn't know about this sign. No one told me. But if it's public notice now, no, the guy can't know. say anything or he'll say less. My, I don't know how long it takes to get a sign up. Well, you could publish it in the Hardwood Gazette. Just put us a notice in the Hardwood Gazette. Yeah. Mike? I'm waiting for the chair to acknowledge me. Lynn? <laughs> no, it's, it's fine, Mike. Uh, so I think Hardwick Electric should be in charge of getting and installing this sign, not others. It's okay. our it's our message. Absolutely. It's our sign. Yes. Oh, okay, fine. Make two, because after they knock the first one down, you won't have a spare to put back up. <laughs> Don't worry. We know how to build stuff strong. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing this to us and good yeah. luck. Yeah. If I could, could I have like just five minutes or less, um, maybe oh, three minutes? So let, let, let's not, let's do that later because we're, we're, right. way, we're way over time. You're way over. Perfect. Thank you. We'll, we'll come back to that one. Okay. Well, the next item on the agenda, and I don't know if this is the same people or not, is the request for Kingdom Games to use the Caspian property for a swim event. Not the same. Not, Not the, same. the same. I'm leaving. Okay. So, so last year, Lynn, uh, Kingdom Games made the request to utilize the property for a swim event that they charge money for. They charge a registration fee. It's a big event. And you all gave them permission to do so as long as they provided us a letter in accordance with what Eli wrote, which was basically they had to sign a waiver for us, uh, include us on their insurance documents, et cetera, et cetera. And since then, since last year, there's been quite a bit of discussion with the Greensboro committee or the Lake Association um, because there's several hundred people that show up at this event and the bathrooms get used and there's all kinds of garbage. And so the committee, uh, requested the Kingdom Games to make a donation to cover all those costs of pumping the septic tank after the event, get, dealing with the garbage, et cetera, et cetera, which they've done. They made their donation as requested. They're all good to go. They just want, uh, I just told them I had to get your permission again to give them, uh, to give them a letter so that they could have their event. So I'm asking you if it's still okay for them to use the beach. No, no issues with wakes from the swimmers. No, I don't, not that I'm aware of. They might have a bionic somebody out there. I don't know. Um, so, yes, I mean, my view is so long as they sign an appropriate waiver and have appropriate insurance coverage <laughs> that includes us as an additional insured. Yeah. So, yeah, the, he, he's making the same request he did last year, and I'd like your permission to respond in the exact same fashion we did last year. I don't have a problem with that. I would like to see requests either in person or in writing in the future, and you might convey that to them. Yeah. So that we have a clear record of what's being requested and by and by whom. But do we need a motion on this? Is there a motion? I, I can't make a motion. I'd move to approve the request. Uh, based on uh, the, whatever the organization is signing the waiver uh, and getting and making the appropriate payment as, as previously. Is there a second? Second. Any opposition? Hearing none, it's approved. Okay, so the next item on our agenda is meeting in person in the future. Any discussion, thoughts? Let's do it. <laughs> I, Nat, you've been opposed to it in the past. Are you? Well, I'm. I'm not so much opposed to it as there's a tremendous advantage to Zoom for people like Ken. They don't have to come over here and wait, and you know, and and, and Eli too. So, you know, as long as you can have Zoom input. From from our standpoint, from the commissioner's standpoint, and Mike's, yeah, we can, you know, and Beth, we can we can come in. I don't see any particular advantage to coming in person, but I see some great advantages to at least maintaining Zoom. I think there's I, I I'm fine with a hybrid approach. I think there's a big advantage to being in person. I think communication is much better in person. People's screens tonight have been freezing up. Um yeah, and I think the hybrid is great. Yeah, there's no reason people have to come all the way in from, you know, as far as they do for something that may only take 15 minutes, which is crazy. So, yeah, and there, there's like board does hybrid all the time and they have no problem. There's the health and the safety and the uh, environmental component. And so hybrid, I mean, I think hybrid is great. Well, so long as so long as the commissioners are making an effort to be there in person, I think it's important yeah, to be in person. I can do that. Um, and and frankly, I think when Vepsa does presentations, it's it's better in person than it is on Zoom. Yeah. Um, so in general, I, I 
it's, a, it's better to have someone there on Zoom than to not have them there at all. For sure. So long as it's not a consistent thing. But I would agree. Yeah, with I, I mean, yeah, I, I agree with you. I would much prefer to be there personally. But I think the... Uh, uh, the it sounds yeah. like we're in agreement on this. Yes, okay. So we, I don't think we need a motion. We'll just schedule the next meeting in person. And I guess the only question is, where do we meet? Are we going to, because if we are having a hybrid meeting, we probably shouldn't be upstairs at the electric department because it's, we really don't, have, do we have the technology? We don't have the no. technology. No, if we want to be, if we want to be hybrid, we're going to have to work it out with Hardwick TV and do the same thing the select board does, which yeah. would be better for everybody. I would prefer to meet downstairs rather than upstairs, as long as the wasp situation is what it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think I've ever been to a meeting in there, Lynn, even in January where there wasn't one of them buzzing around. So I'll pick well, them were, downstairs. There were a lot. There were a lot last week. Yeah, it wasn't one. Um. Okay, which takes us to AMI and the draft contracts and i guess before we talk about the draft contracts i mean i think we need to talk about the ami proposal itself and whether that's something that we want to do because if it's not something that we want to do then it doesn't really matter what's in the contracts and and i at least have I mean, we had some discussion, what was it, in December? So it's 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 a while ago. Um, and looking at the information that we had gotten then and looking at, it's you know, I wonder if some of the things have changed, if any of the numbers have changed. Um, it strikes me that interest rates may be different, um, for example, and that may have a, an effect on, on the outcome. Of, of any analysis. And the other thing that I didn't see in the analysis, Ken, was we, what's the effect on rates? What's the, what's the rate pressure effect on us? Because to me, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a crucial thing. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out with the different numbers that were, were there. Can I share my screen, Mike? Is that oh, absolutely. Okay. I gotta do this. Come on, baby. For what it's worth, I agree with you, Lynn. The in in person is almost always better, and we are starting to meet with commissions and trustees in person again. So happy to do it. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong here. You need to make him a co-host? Yeah, I'm not. It has to be, I had I had a problem with this one. So you, you have to go into the settings and make sure it's at the way bottom of the list of all the stuff that, that you're, you can make some. Here we go. Else. Got it. Got it. Sorry about that. I found it. I have to go on to Ken's. Okay, Ken is the co-host now. I'll see the spreadsheet I put up. Yep. Okay. Um, I guess just to start answering the questions, the the cost estimate has not changed from what you saw previously. That's uh, Aclara has locked into those prices. So far, they have not proposed any changes. Um, we're seeing noise about that in other places just with the inflation that's going on. But so far, they're holding everything steady. So we've broken this into a few pieces. Um, 
what's in the upper left column A starts on row four is what we're calling VEPSA common costs. And those are items related to the uh, collector points, the, the uh, boxes that will be on your distribution poles connected to fiber optics or cell phone or whatever we're gonna, we have to use for communications. Um, the cost and Clara, uh, Clara is going to charge us for installing that. Um, their service for designing the network and preparing the software. Uh, training costs, which we've included for everybody. We're hoping that we can bundle a few utilities together and drop this number a little bit. But we've assumed the worst case here. Um, I have a quick question for you, Ken. Uh, yeah. Since the RF study hasn't been done yet, how can these num are the how can these numbers be firm? So they've done a pre preliminary RF study. They've we've given them meter locations based on customer addresses. So they've done a first propagation study as to what they think for the number of units. Um, I wouldn't say it's firm necessarily. They're going to have to run that again. Um, and look at if there's, like they've put a collector point at a particular location and we either can't get communications or for some reason the pole can't accommodate, we have to move to another pole, they'll have to make some of those adjustments. But there's money in the contingency, assuming a couple of collectors may have to be added to move things around. So we're talking about like a 5% deviation, maybe. Yeah, that's what I would expect. Um, Ken Santamore in our shop actually drove around once we got the first propagation study. He personally visited every one of the proposed locations to see what was available for communications. Um, and like I say, barring something we don't know about on the utility side, we're feeling pretty good about the number. Um, there's money in for the management and, and support um, for, for VEPS itself. That's our IT yeah. people kind of managing this. Uh, we've got a, a project manager that we've worked with in the past who uh, we're going to contract with to make sure that we're stay on time and on budget and hold a Clara accountable for what they have to do. I um, mean, there's also some reporting we have to do with the state for that grant. So that's built into that number. Um, there's cost for integration into GIS, um, and then a contingency on on each project. So we've we made a VEPSA contingency and we've allocated it out to each of the members. Um, so those, and that was allocated on the basis of the number of meters. Uh, based on your meter count, correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. Not to say you couldn't pay some of these items up front if you wanted to, but we've assumed these are going to be VEPs the common costs that we have to carry on our books because, of the, for example, the collector points are some cases where two or three members are sharing one individual point. Um, so we've kind of we've tried to divide this up into things that are shared by various participants um, and items that are specifically for your utility, clearly for your utility. Uh, so that's the utility specific below um, the cost for the meter. Oh. Someone have a comment? I'm getting some feedback, I think. Um, so if the electric points, I would put in the same category as the collectors. We've worked with Mike and his staff to make some estimates of which types of meters we're going to need. So this is a combination of residential and commercial. Um, just having done this before, we're going to find errors when we actually get in the field and, and see what's out there. So uh, this number may move a little bit as we actually identify specifically what meters we need, but I think it's a pretty good estimate on where we are today. Um, there's annual software. These are the maintenance fees, and you'll see when I move to the annual cost. Those are rolled into the capital project for their first year, and then they turn into an annual maintenance number for subsequent years. Uh, the meter installation cost, I think we mentioned this the last time. We've included a cost here, uh, $35 a meter, in case we have to contract out. 
that's a soft cost if you decide to use your own uh, crews to put the meters in, but we want to capture it because it, we can submit that number to the state for grant reimbursement of close to 50%. Um, we have some initial quotes from SEDC as to what they think the integration will be to connect AMI to your CIS. It's the, the estimate here is 20,000. And then a, uh, more of insurance items we've run into in other places we've seen this done they run into you go to change a meter and you find out the service panels corroded um, or the meter channels got a problem with it you have to replace it um, and you occasionally have people who when you change the meter out all oh, my refrigerator died you know as, when, as part of you changing the meter so we put a little bit of money in for those type of things um not much of a refrigerator. <laughs> uh, I mean, when when Burlington did this, they had you know two claims people made, and both of them were denied because they couldn't actually show that it was linked to the meter. But just some kind of contingency there. Um. So we're looking at total project cost of around four hundred forty-three thousand in common aspects. Another eight hundred and seven thousand for the the Hardwick specific for uh, one point two five million being the gross cost of the project for Vepsa total um, across all the members we're looking at about ten and a half million and the state gave us a five million dollar grant so allocating that out. Um, about a 47 and a half percent grant for, for everyone. Um, so calculated the applied grant, Hardwick would be, get roughly $596,000 reduction in the cost um, reimbursement from the state, which means the net cost to you, capital cost would be 654,000. That's, that's the year one installation cost, including that software um, kind of maintenance component. And including the meter installation cost. My, my recollection, as you said, we could install the meters ourselves. Yeah, my intention was to, because we're in the second wave of installs, the second group of EPSA members. So we have a year plus where we buy meters now, we can start installing them and we could probably do it for half of that 150 if we get going on them soon. If we end up in a time crunch and have 30 days to get the last 2000 meters, well then we're gonna need help. But if we can get going on them ASAP, then we can save some money on that piece. But if we do it for half, it doesn't really save any money. If we're getting a grant, uh, well, no. Uh, okay, I guess we would get the same amount. It would, it would be 50. It's a reimbursable grant. So it would okay, be whatever so your cost is, you'd get the 47 percent ish back. So we wouldn't really necessarily save anything if we did it for half half the amount. We'd save half of half, you'd save. We'd save half of it, yeah. Yeah. So if, if you can do it for 75,000, you'd get 35, 40,000 from the state. So your net cost would be, you know, three quarters less. Okay, so doing it internally is reimbursable. Okay. Yeah. Hey, yeah, we've, we've, we've structured this on, on our side. We've structured the finances, assuming that you'll, Hardwick would be, if you install the meters yourself, Hardwick would send us an invoice for the time your staff used to install the meters. We would, we would send that to the state and then send you whatever we get for a check from the state to to cover the cost. So the, the balance of that 5 million then that would be saved would be distributed among the rest of the utilities? Correct, there's none of it gonna be held by VEPSA, it's going directly to the utilities. And it just, uh, this is probably pretty obvious, but is, is, it, is the grant money taxable? No. Okay. Now it's state state general fund money going to a nonprofit, so it's it's not taxable. Um, so moving over on the loan question, um, 
if you use VEPSA as the finance vehicle, we have locked in 5.28%. Uh, that loan is closed. The money's in escrow awaiting contracts to be executed. Um, and the tenor on that? Uh, it's a it's a 10 year loan and amortization. We cannot access it right now. Uh, there are two conditions we have to meet before we can access the money for any member. Um, they have to have signed the contract with VEPSA uh, and we need uh, PUC approval uh, saying they approve the project. Once those two things are done, we can access the full full project cost uh, from that loan. Now we're using it as working capital. We only borrowed 4 million because we are assuming that half the money is coming back from the state. And we already know that some members have said, once we move forward, they're gonna wanna pay up front for their components. They've, a couple of them have money that has been set aside for this project or ones like it. Um, so they would anticipate funding directly. So we, we've set the loan up so we can, it's large enough that we can use it for working capital awaiting reimbursement, but we wouldn't have borrowed the full 10 million and then have to figure out how to repay the, the full amount after other, you know, have a kind of a prepayment provision in there. Um, this does have a prepayment, but we don't anticipate necessarily using it. And uh, all these prices are contingent upon uh, every other member of VEPSA signing on onto this? No, uh, it's subject to about a third. So in order to maintain the pricing, we have to uh, show up with 10,000 meters, uh, including both electric and water. And if you put VEPSA's members together, the electric side's a little over 30,000 and is about another 6,000 in water. Uh, so if a third of the members sign up, Obviously, the larger utilities are, are more important there. Um, but Swanton, Northfield, Orleans, and Enosburg are already ready to go. And I believe, I'd have to confirm it, but I believe with those four, we meet the threshold. And I'm sorry, Ken, you said you said that 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 there's no prepayment penalty? Correct. So so if interest rates dropped, you could refinance. We could. There, there is a limitation. We'd have to refinance with a community bank. So they would want to refinance with themselves. Um, if we move the money elsewhere, then there, there is a provision for, for a prepayment penalty under that condition. And is that 5 million? Uh, does that go, does that remain 5 million, uh, for three utilities or four utilities, or is it 50% and then any additional amount is distributed? I mean, any additional costs? I, well, I guess what I'm saying is so, say so you cost 5 million for half the utilities to do it, uh, or, you know, uh, then would they be covered 100% for the installation? Is that 5 million just a block amount, or is it a, or is it up to 5 million with? 50% being reimbursed. It's out. Actually a very good question. Uh, the grant agreement draft the state has sent us, uh, let me answer it differently. The amount that was passed by the legislature was a block, well, block 8 million for utilities and 5 million ended up being allocated to VEPSA. So as far as the legislature is concerned, it's a $5 million block. The grant agreement the Department of Public Service has sent forward has a provision in it saying they want to make sure that VEPSA is allocating the grant across all the utilities. So they have included in the grant agreement this actual budget. Now, let me go to the... <coughs> so would you have to hold back that 50% from and have it in escrow until other utilities signed on? Um, I... No, we're, we're I'm not sure I'm answering the question properly, but we're structuring this essentially so each project is its own. So 
once a utility signs the contract, we have the PUC approval, which we're honestly intending to file for one PUC approval for all VEPSA members that want that ultimately choose to go forward. So we don't have to file 11 different times to get approval. Um, but once those two things are in place, then we would move forward with the utilities that have signed the contract. And once we spent money related to those utilities projects, we would be eligible to, to both uh, access the loan funds to, to, to make sure the project moves and to submit for reimbursement from the DPS. So they would, they're viewing every utility as on a path for its own particular project, um, sign the contract, get PUC approval, start the work with a Clara, and then submit invoicing to be reimbursed. Okay. And I, I think what Vince was asking was if Hardwick Electric or whatever utility doesn't participate, what happens to the dollar that they were going to get? Is that what you were asking, Vince? Yeah, uh, pr pretty much because, I mean, it, it's not 50% that we Hydro Electric would be getting. It's 40, whatever it is. 47. 40, yeah, 47. Well, it's, in round numbers, it's 50%. Right, right. But what I'm saying is that it varies from what was, you know, wh what is it? Is it 50% or, or is it a, a specific <clears throat> amount that's distributed only if all the utilities sign up? Or, you know, I, I, or is the block distributed just among the utilities that sign up and any, it, it's, I mean, I, maybe it's, I'm not asking it correctly, but it's not clear to me. Uh, I mean, the, the, you can apply for funding with the PUC or, or whatever it is, DPS, uh, but up, up to what amount? I mean, cause this 47 point something, it seems like a, it's based on something. It's based on the total cost of uh, VEPS's estimated total project cost. Right, but that's if everyone's everyone um, right. subscribes. Right. So, so, what's, so what's, let me try. Let me try to answer it differently, Vince. Um, the legislature allocated eight million dollars as a one-time funding out of last legislative session, out of 2022's legislative session, because we advocated strongly spent a lot of political capital to argue that without state funding, these projects made no sense for anybody. The legislature agreed and gave us $8 million to be allocated across public power utilities that did not already have AMI installed. <laughs> so they specifically excluded BED and WEC um, and VEC to a degree because they had AMI installed. They gave the $8 million to the Department of Public Service and asked them to issue it as a grant. So when the DPS it, uh, put out an RFP back last fall, I think it was November timeframe, uh, seeking uh, projects. So VEPSA put in a project. We actually requested $6 million uh, from them. Washington Electric Co-op put in a, a response for their project, and Vermont Electric Co-op put in a request for funding to put AMI in areas of their territory that did not have it already. So they they installed a, an Eclara system about 15 years ago, but there were sections of their territory that they couldn't get to work, so they didn't put AMI in. That money was those uh, projects were funded by the DPS and they were funded by allocating $5 million to VEPSA and splitting the other three between WEC and VEC. So right now we have, VEPSA itself has access to the $5 million and the expectation from the department is that we will allocate the 5 million across all of our membership. As far as the DPS is concerned right now, all VEPSA members are participating or plan to participate. You raise a valid question. If Hardwick said, no, we're not doing this, what would happen? Um, I, I think, I think we, we, we've got a lot to talk about and 
the issue is is do we want to do this and 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 what happens to the money if we don't do it is an interesting question but it it really isn't our problem um so i'd like to come back to the question that i had asked which is what is the 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 rate impact because i didn't understand right what those numbers were in in the sheet that you're that we're looking at okay so when so i look at the hardwick numbers when when i i think roger had asked that we take the the veps alone and turn it into annual cost estimates for hardwick so that's what this is kind of based around it's done for all the members but it's on that that premise so uh, starting in, col in column F, um, the, the various components are broken down here. The VEPS are common. So that's assuming that we're taking all the components that would be Hardwick related, but on VEPS's books. So the, ne the network, the install, the software, and all that stuff. Um, spreading it over 10 years because we'd be using the... Uh, the loan that we have to, to cover the cost there. And then also assuming inflation, because uh, this VEPS allocation is going to have some internal labor to manage the project in the future. So added 3% to it just to reflect an internal VEPS of management cost estimate. Okay. So that's, that's going forward through the years. Um, the second column takes that same loan, the 5.28% loan, and spreads it over the 10 years. So it's assuming that you're funding your portion of the cost through bo borrowing from VEPSA. And that's the net portion. That's after the grant comes back. Right. Uh, there's an ongoing Eclara maintenance cost every year, uh, primarily related to the software. Um that's held steady for three years, and then it starts to escalate. And then just total those up. So the projected cost in year one, because you've already paid the maintenance in the uh, capital project, is $85,000. That's projected to jump in year two um, to 116, and it stays in that range until you get out to year 11, when the loan is paid off um, and then it drops just 78 ish. At least that's the estimate. Uh, so levelized cost across the 15 year projected life of about $108,000. And that's using, so that's levelized over 15 years. Correct. At what discount rate? I just spread it out zero discount rate. So it's just taking the nominal fees and averaging them out. Uh, to get to your rate question, though, uh, there were a number, there were several scenarios here. So I think when we met in December, we talked about Jackie Lemmerhertz had sat, sat down with Mike and gone through projected savings. To be consistent across all the members, I'm still using that here. Um, and she started out with savings in year two of 134000 and jumping up the uh, year three, they were project she was projecting power supply. So that's the top part here. Um, shows a cost in the first year, savings in the second year. So these numbers, these numbers are different. I have the, oh, this is, this is, is this for Hardwick? That's for Hardwick. Okay. Cause, cause what we had in no, that's why I asked if the numbers had changed because I was seeing numbers, for example, in the in the in the second year of one hundred ninety one thousand as as the benefit, not one hundred and thirty three thousand. I think she had made some changes based on the conversation. Okay. Where you? Okay, that that I I just didn't I I had not gotten those numbers, so that's 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 fine. Yeah, we went through that with her line by line and discounted a number of her. Saving. No, no, I remember doing but, that. Well, I have... Is this the? I so, saw. Is this the original number she had, or is this the adjusted one after our first meeting? So th there's two scenarios here. 
the 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 one I'm talking about now is her original projections. Okay. Before your conversation, with one change being the the power supply savings were moved out a year based on conversations he had with you and others that didn't think that was going to happen. Um, the way okay. we thought. But the, I have open Tim a spreadsheet that was in the packet with all the contracts. Yeah. And it has different numbers than what you're share what you're screen sharing. What are the numbers you're seeing? It shows um, a 2021 cost of service of uh, four of of six million one hundred and thirty seven thousand one hundred and two as against the four million. Was that, was that hard? Oh, that number. You 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 found an error in my spreadsheet. So one second. Okay. I think I'm going to match up closer with what you get once I do this. I apologize. That's why I like working with this commission. You guys are all eagle eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get my head around this and and <laughs> so, yep. so does that match up better? Uh yeah. Uh yeah, that looks there was a labeling. So uh, my uh, my apologies. The yeah. um if you remember when we met in December, Hardwick had a it said Hardwick RF in and some of the labels here. Um, like Lindenville has the RF connotation and Hardwick had it. And I tried to change that and I apparently missed one of them. So that's why, why I wondered what that was. Why, why, so why we had, we had two different proposals. The, uh, okay. the, I, I found, I requested a Clara to give us a price with a power line carrier system. Uh, okay. Thinking yeah. it would come. Uh, so that one said, PL and then this one is radio frequency. Radio frequency. Okay. And when yeah. they gave us the the one on the power line carrier was the exact same price to the penny. <laughs> Suspicious. Yeah. yeah. In other words, they didn't want to provide that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So thank you for finding that error, Lynn. Um so the, the top part we're talking about all the same. Hopefully the benefits align better with what you were seeing on, on your open sheet. So again, you see the costs, the uh, net savings and costs in year one would be $86,000 cost. And then the benefits kick in. And you, according to Jackie Lemmerhertz, you would see this savings. Um, your 2021 cost of service. This is before the rate case you are in process now. Mm -hmm. um, 6.1 million. So to your rate rate impact question, if you assume the cost of AMI with no benefits, so we take the 85,000 in year one and 116, 17, and so forth, then you look at a levelized rate impact of about 1.8% increase. If you believe Jackie Lemmerhurt's savings numbers, then you actually end up about a percent and a half decrease. Now I wanna go down to answer the question that was posed about the, um, the conversation you had. So the savings estimates after your discussion with Jackie Lemmerhertz and the adjustments that you all asked her to make, your mm -hmm. savings estimates dropped from uh, what she was showing is 191, 95, 100, you know, roughly a, just less than 200,000. You brought it down to 21,000 in year two and 30,000 going on. So much, much more less than what she was anticipating. Right. If yeah. your if your estimates are the accurate ones, 
then you're looking at about a net rate impact of about 1.2% increase to do this project. Okay. So it's it's better. So so what we did is better than than the no benefits, but it's it's not a it's it's, it's still gonna would increase costs to to move forward. Yeah. Um. And Kim, what's the and the AMI question point? becomes how soon would we need to to do that, and that depends on what else is going on. I mean, if our, if our, yeah, you'd, you, you know, looking at your estimates of benefits, you'd be roughly $90,000 a year starting right in year one. I mean, it doesn't change much from right the, in, the first year cost. But 90,000 in one year isn't going to send us in for a rate increase. 90,000 in a few years will. Good. Depending on what's happening on power supply and other and, every, other and everything else, yeah. yeah. Can what's the latest requirements for AMI in terms of the regulations? Was there a time frame? Well, th there is and there isn't. <laughs> so, uh, so the only known requirement is in the transportation bill two years ago. They included a clause that says all distribution utilities have to offer either electric vehicle specific rates, whole home time of use rates, or you have to have some kind of mechanism to actively control electric vehicles and give the benefits of that control to the EV owners. Practically speaking, we found GMP and Burlington have tried to do EV rates without having um, interval meter readings and and there have they haven't been able to do it effectively uh so when, when view, you say that can when you say they haven't been able to do it effectively did they have time of use meters well burlington has burlington has ami meters they tried to give electric vehicle owners uh Rather than see this differently, rather than doing a whole home time of use rate, which was one of the options allowed in the in the transportation bill, Burlington said, "Well, what if we just gave the EV homeowner uh, like a three dollar a month credit if they weren't on, if they weren't charging the car at the time of our peak load?" They tried to do it like a, a credit against the bill. And what they found was in order to do that, they had to, to manually look at the AMI data to determine whether the car could have been charging at that time. Um, and they actually tried to work a, a deal with one of the charging companies to say, well, give us the data so we can check the charger specifically. And the company said, sure, we'll do that. Uh, but you got to pay us you know, a few hundred dollars a month uh, for these couple of cars that were charging in order to get access to the data. So Burlington found that even with the AMI meters, if they tried to do something <laughs> kind of standalone, it was very manual and they were going to have to pay the charging companies for access to the data. So in other words, it's it, the AMI isn't doing anything for a charging rate. Well, AMI allows you to do a whole home time of use rate which meets the statutory requirement right. and you don't have to tie it to an EV. You but, can't... But, but you can do a time of use rate without AMI. You can do a time of use rate without AMI if you put in the mechanical meters and yes. collect that data. Like we did so. 40 years ago. Yeah. And how much do those meters cost? Roughly. I tried to Google it and I couldn't find it. I've got, I'm going to have to defer to Mike Sullivan. Mike, that do you have one any, if he idea? Has any idea? Um, I would guess it, 
the ones that we would get would probably be remanufactured because like Centron or Itrons, they're, they don't make those meters anymore. They're, that's not their market. Um, there's nothing wrong with remanufactured meters. We're, we've been using them for years since I've been there. Uh, and I would guess we could get them time of use and be able to utilize, you know, a couple uh, different registers to get readings of use during two sections of hours of the day for maybe 70 bucks a piece. $70 a piece. What would be the labor cost to do it that way versus AMI in terms of analyzing that data and making it an invoice? Yeah. Uh, Beth, what would that take in SEDC? Well, I'm really unfamiliar with those Just meters. a lot, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm unfamiliar with those meters to understand what data we're being given. So I'm, I'm going to give you... Glenn's going to come in with reads for Beth Essery's house. It used to all be one reading. Now we're going to get one reading from hours X to Y and one yeah. reading from hours Y to Z. So there's going to be two readings. Two things have to be processed at different rates. That the software will do it. We, I It'll was going to say, now. that's not complicated. We, we, yeah. we did that 40 years ago. Yeah. But it's got to be more labor intense than AMI, but. But not, I, I guess what, what concerns me on this, you know, looking at one year in and of itself is it probably doesn't make us go into a rate case right away, but it, it, it contributes to rate pressure. And at this point, most of the people who have, and, 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 and I will read you, Roger, sent me a text he couldn't be here but you know he he he's, he said that uh you know his concern is that the board should have a clear honest picture of options when voting to burden all ratepayers with a project that may only benefit a few of the generally wealthier households <laughs> and i i think i think that's i think that's a real issue and that's why I asked the question about, and 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 by the way, Mike, if you didn't see it, Vince, if you didn't see it, Nat, Mike sent out the um, legislation that that Ken was talking about this afternoon. I did see it. Um, and there there are possibilities of getting extensions on this thing, and it's it's a whole it's a whole process. And and even with this, would we be with AMI, it wasn't clear to me that we would make that deadline. Um, depending, depending on if how we're in the went, second tranche, depending on how you went forward, and honestly, for the folks in the third tranche in particular, we'd probably be asking for an extension as part of the AMI approval process. Yeah, I, I my guess is it would be you know that the second tranche also would probably need some of that, but. But in any case, they're independent of that. There, there's the possibility of extensions. I don't, I don't know how many electric vehicles we have in our service territory. But if we have a hundred, and I, and I'm going to guess that we don't have a whole lot more than that. A hundred times seventy is is seven thousand dollars. I mean, it's it it would take. A whole lot to get anywhere as close to the cost of AMI. And I realize we get other data and it would help with, with doing more sophisticated rate designs and, and having some 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 data out there that we can can use. But I I just I just really wonder and and, and I realize that if, if the order becomes get AMI, if we don't do this, then we lose the grant um I, I think that's that's the question so so the, the the question that was has been asked of me repeatedly is is there an order saying we have to do ami and i think i've been consistent in the message that i don't think the puc is ever going to order you to do advanced meter but what is likely to happen is what you're seeing in the transportation bill. Over time, 
they clearly, and I've, I've heard this from the DPS and PUC members directly. I mean, they believe that AMI is required to do some of the, the load management activities we're going to have to do when heat pumps and EVs and solar panels become prevalent, you know, the prosumer view of the world. Um, so, so, so I, I believe I, you're, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I was, uh, I, yeah, I don't want to. I just want to. Yeah, I like. I had my uh, mute on, so uh, um, it's going to say. I mean, the the primary, you know, the, the control aspect, you know, the the demand response control aspect. It really isn't control. I mean, you know, the AMI has a role in that, but most of it is really controlled by protocols through internet, and it's not. Uh, it it, it re it's. The only advantage I can see, I mean, I agree with Lynn, just, you know, for those few, as much as I like technology, for those few uh, people that, that may have, uh, t you know, required <laughs> time of use rates, um, other than that, you know, the uh, the advantage of AMI being able to locate a, a power outage. I mean, there's, you know, that's a real, real advantage. But other than that, the, the demand response, I mean, it, it really is going to be uh, it, it's not going to be AMI based. It's going to be, you know, uh, internet protocol based. And uh, so I'm not sure. And it's going to be by it's it's it, it is now it's not going to be. It is now device specific. And um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, how do you feel about that? And, and, and Mike, I mean, that that's the direction almost every demand response program is going. I mean, it, that way the, the time of use rate is built in. You can see exactly like the device, you don't have to pay the car charger. I mean, it actually will just come from the device. It doesn't have to go through the manufacturer. I mean, it, it, it really is just pulling data like off of a Nest um, thermostat, for example. Well, I think whether it's Google or internet, whatever it is, my feeling has always been if it's technology that doesn't pay for itself in three years, you're wasting your money. Here, this is never going to pay for itself. And things are going to happen over the next three, five years. They're going to dramatically change how this all gets done. Well, that's <laughs> that's the other thing that I wondered about because, and, and Ken, you can speak to this, but my sense is, is that the early adopters <clears throat> of, of AMI are now looking at replacing what they put in because it's 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 not state of the art anymore. It's it's not doing all the things that if you were going to do it, you'd want to do with it. Yeah, I'd frame it a little differently. Um, I know people are people are the early adopters are absolutely replacing what they put in. That's a true statement. Um, I think different utilities are replacing, making replacements for different reasons. For example, VEC put in a power line carrier originally, and they're finding that that that's fine with the data. Um, they can't do like on-demand reads. They, they can't do a lot of the uh, functions that an RF system will do. So they're, they're actually changing technologies or planning to. Um, Burlington, when I talk to them, they're replacing their system. They actually think the meters are working well. Um, and the, the meter technology isn't a lot different than what they put in back in 2010. But the software has changed a lot. Um, and where back then you had to have on-premise. So you had, you know, they have an Oracle server in Burlington. <laughs> Uh, to run the the meter data management system now it, it's almost all cloud based, um, so that's where they're seeing the change. So, yeah, I think I, I think I, I agree with Vince's description that active control of devices is going to be internet based. Um, I'm not sure about the statement that you don't have to pay for it. I think there's going to be a lot of third party aggregators trying to get into the market. Um, you know, do do what a Sun Common or somebody where you you aggregate up all the, the loads and try to to make money that way. Um, I do I still believe and everything I'm being told is the regulators are convinced that 
AMI is going to be a base technology for this transition, not so much to control the devices, but to monitor the system loads and monitor what's happening on the grid over time and see what the load shapes are, what the compensation rates should be, what the how the rate should change. Um, so more for utility operations necessarily than active control of devices. It's a whole separate question as to how you're going to handle that. But if you're talking Hardwick Electric's load on the grid, you're talking noise. <coughs> No, it's not just for the the transmission side. It's no, looking... I understand. I understand about load shapes. I I I I, I, I know. I, <laughs> I I just um. You're wrestling with a valid question, and if you I, I... if you believe the benefits are as you've projected them as a commission then I can see where you question the project. Um, most, most of the other members uh, see a total cost. I mean, with, with the rate impacts without any benefits are very similar across the membership. <clears throat> most of the folks who decide they wanna go forward are giving value to being able to reassign uh, employees to other duties. They are giving more credit to the, the power costs. So a lot of this depends on what do you see as the benefits of the, the other savings. Um, and in particular, those who have water departments I mean, see an, an extra benefit. <clears throat> so the water meters sit on the same same network, which you, you don't have that benefit. We don't have that. We don't have that. Um... And if we did, you know, it, it, it would look different. But, um, without like, again, getting too technical, um, as far as getting good load uh, data goes, I mean, I maybe you can explain it to me. I don't understand why you can't have, in the same way you can monitor your solar or anything else, you can't have the CTs on your, on your uh, L1 and L2 and pull data off that on a microsecond basis. I mean, it, it, you know, it may be not calibrated, but it's going to give you, it's going to give you a pretty good load, um, load curve uh, for for the house, but on a much uh, much higher frequency. Whereas, you know, the meter, it's a dedicated device that goes through all these these other, you know, it's a very low data rate, dedicated device. So anyway, I guess uh, without going on and on, why can't it be internet based? It can be added as people get high speed internet. And uh, are these devices available? I know they have them for like sub metering uh, right now, but uh, I haven't seen any systems like that. There are ways, I mean, there, again, I can only speak to what we were doing back yeah. in, in, in prehistory, uh, but <laughs> We had load data by customer classes, hourly loads. We had load curves. It was sample data. This was a huge company. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just you know, but, but, but so we but we had we had stratified random samples that we were using that proved to be pretty accurate, and because um, we could predict we could predict the load as as the temperature changed on on days. Um, and 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 we were very very close. I mean, we would hit it more often than 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 not. Um, and and I, I so I mean, there 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 are there there are ways to to do it. Um, it may not. It's not as automatic. It's it's not as pretty as as this. But 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 there will be more ways coming. So yeah. we don't have to go backwards to do it. We could look forward and something else will pop up. I think the question is, do we want to spend $100,000 a year in round numbers to do this? Or do we want to say, hey, let's wait and see three years from now what the opportunities are? I mean, that's the real question. It's the money. And if, if the borrowing rate were less, it's not going to... 
I, I don't know what the sensitivity on this. I was curious and I was just looking at, at um, municipal bonds um, rates and, and they're lower for the tenor that we're talking about. For a 10 year bond, you're looking at under 4%. For, well, with, it is a 3%, what that do to the numbers? <laughs> I'm sorry? He just, uh, Ken just changed it to 3%. Ah. The numbers don't change that much. Okay. Um, I'm still losing eighty grand so a year. Saves you if you go to three percent interest, it say drops it by ten thousand a year. Yeah. Okay. So it's 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 not it's not it's not significant. Um. Well, Mike, you're 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 living with us this stuff day to day. Um. And I mean, we spent time and and. On, on the benefits, you know, and adjusting those to what we thought. And, you know, I think we were relying on, on you know, your view on different things like substituting employees and what would be a truck or, are we missing something here? I mean, because I, I'm with, I'm with, I'm with Mike. I, I don't, I'm concerned about spending a hundred thousand dollars a year on something that never pays for itself. I can't say that I'm a big pro AMI guy and especially for hardwick electric, but it's pretty hard to walk away from a $500,000 freebie that gives us something the regulators or the powers that be are going to want, or we believe they're going to want. So well, it's not an easy, it, there's no easy answer here. <laughs> Me. It, it's, it, but the thing is, even with the half a million dollars, yeah. we're still in the hole. We're still in the hole in a significant way. And, and that. So what app, I know Roger made a comment one time, many meetings ago, he said, and I think Lynn, you agreed with him was, you know, it would probably be better for us and I would be more comfortable if the PUC mandated that we did this because, well, then we did it because we had to do it. We right. didn't make a bad business decision. Yeah. Yep. So I think everybody was on board with that. So what happens in two years if they make that mandate and everybody says, Hey, dummy, you walked away from this deal over there. Now you're going to be double what you were. And that's and that's when we go to our state senator and our state rep and we say, look, we were doing what was best <clears throat> for our ratepayers under the law as it was at the time. And we didn't want to impose that kind of cost on 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 people who are living paycheck to paycheck. And so can you find some grant money for us? We can get a Bernie Sanders set aside. There, uh, there might be, I, I haven't thought this through. This is just off the top of my head. So take it for what it's worth. But um, there could be a middle ground if you wanted to take it. Which <clears throat> is we're going to have to file for PUC approval for those who have decided they want to move forward. That same docket could be, could be used as a venue to put this in front of the PUC squarely and say Hardwick's chosen. They're just the Hardwick Commission does not believe it is in their customers' best interest to take this action, but they're cognizant of the state grant, and <clears throat> you want a PUC determination um, as to whether you should move forward or not. I mean, I have to get Eli and Bill Ellis to put their heads together on how to make that work. But I think that is a possible and then, and, and then it's putting the onus on them if they say, yeah, you got to do it, then it's 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 not the business decision. It's the commission telling us that we need to do it. <laughs> or maybe. I, I don't know. I don't yeah, that, that takes it takes the responsibility, uh, our responsibility away. But does it make for the best? best decision i mean it, this just feels like i feel like we're at where kenya was uh when they jumped beyond over landlines to cell service and it, this just feels like such a clunky 
intermediate technology that provides minimal benefits for this particular situation. When, you know, well, like Wi-Fi capable meters, just uh, what, you know, provide their, I don't know if they exist. I, I've, I've looked, they do have uh, some uh, being implemented in India, but it just seems like such a, almost, it seems like such a much better solution. I mean, I've, people have internet, yeah, they have it right there. You, they can pull the data. I mean, it's instead of having this almost this contrived clunky system to aggregate data on a really low uh, bit rate uh, and then through a, a dedicated vendor that, you know, basically holds you in thrall. It just, it just, from a business perspective, if I was doing this for my business, I would, uh, the cost benefit analysis, as much as I like AMI, as much as I'm for grid transition, this doesn't feel like a, 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 a good, uh, necessarily a good payoff. Okay, well, I'm hearing Vince isn't in favor of doing this. Mike isn't in favor of doing this. Roger, who's not here to vote today, is not in favor of doing this. Uh, I'm in favor. <laughs> we have to ask Nat. I'm not, I'm, I'm not in favor of it, never have been. But, uh, I mean, it's an awful lot of money that is available now, and you get nervous about whether it will be available next year. But I, I would go with, let's hold off if I possibly could. Uh, and I, yeah. I'm not hearing anybody in favor of doing this. Oh, well, it's never been a slam dunk for sure. Yeah, I'm 50-50. I'm, I'm zero of 100. <laughs> <laughs> Technology is gonna change. It's gonna it, get better. It, it, this is, it's really, this does not feel like uh, a, a uh, an elegant system. You can't help feeling that if the PUC wants to order this, they'll give us a certain amount of time and maybe even uh, options for finding some money. Seems unlikely that they would say, you have to do this and it's gonna cost you over a million dollars and tough luck. It wouldn't be very politic. Mm -hmm. Not everything that they do is. Right. Um, uh, Eli, you've been very quiet. I mean, you you read you read the commission tea leaves as well. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm trying to think back <laughs> to um. You know, I was much more tuned into this about ten years ago. <laughs> I do think that the um. Initially, there was a mechanism at the PUC where you could get pre-approval of your AMI plan in order to guarantee some sort of rate treatment. That sounds a little bit like Ken saying. I don't think what you guys are wanting pre-approval of rate treatment, but more confirmation from the PUC that this is going to be a mandate. I mean, it doesn't necessarily make it any better for your ratepayers. But we don't want it to be a mandate. That's that's what bothers me about framing it that way is it's pushing the well, I, I don't know. I mean that's I, I to me that's the only reason you'd go there is because I mean you're looking at it, you don't think it's beneficial to your ratepayers, but you don't want to lose out on the money if you some <laughs> for some reason get mandated in the future. So you're really just going to the PUC to ask whether or not they're going to mandate you to do it in the future which I don't, the PUC is never that helpful. You know, they, they're not into making your business decisions for you. They like to judge your business decisions after the fact and decide whether they were yeah. you know, prudent decisions. So I, I'm skeptical whether you'd ever get the clarity you want from the regulators. So I do think you're, you're more having to make a decision based on the economics that you see now. Um, I don't, I, I don't, as far as the benefits that you guys evaluated, I, I don't know. I mean, I remember, you know, 10 years ago, they were justifying the cost of these things. And again, back then there were huge, there were, um, uh, a, 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 R, R, a grants, um, that a lot of the utilities use to subsidize the cost of it. So now we're 10 years later and there's another round of grants available for it. So, you know, 
not as if grants aren't, aren't happening for this on a consistent basis. Um, but they were justified based on the fact that you could eliminate a bunch of meter readers. That was the cost basis. So, and I don't, I don't think they've ever, I've heard anyone regret the decision that they based it on that. I think those costs were realized. So maybe you are undervaluing your costs a little bit. But I, we I can't, we, 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 but we're not going to have no meter readers. Right. AMI doesn't get us to that point. So yeah. we're still going to have a meter reader. Yep. And and so we we're so thinly staffed that it becomes a binary. It's not like there are four meter readers and you go down to two. We we go to zero and that doesn't work. Yeah. If I, if uh, I could just a couple a couple of clarifications. Um, I think CVPS originally had proposed the <clears throat> the production in like 40 staff at AMI, and they certainly did not realize that, but they saw benefits in other areas that they claim made up the difference. Um, the only only thing I wanted to point out, Elay talked about the ARA money and the, the grants now. Just to be clear, the ARA money paid for 50%. We actually used that as leverage in getting this grant money by saying, well, hey, the other utilities got 50% back with ARA. The municipals should get equal treatment. So this grant money that we we have is actually out of the state general fund to try to mimic what was gotten in ARA. Yeah. I, I don't know what would happen if you turn this down too, because VEPSA <laughs> actually turned down the ARA money, turned down this grant, how that would be perceived, uh, whether Sanders could get you money, I, I don't know. But I just, I want you to go in clear eye that this is, we use the ARA as a, a mechanism to get yeah. this funding. No, I, I remember that discussion. I mean, part of the what's driving this and part of why we're different than than the other VEPSA members is because our cost per customer is so much higher um, because of the nature of our system. And yeah, I... I, I I share the concern, the the angst about, you know, the possibility that we're in this situation a year or two years or three years from now, and and we turn down the money and, but the law right now, as I read it, says you need to do something for the folks who have electric vehicles to give them some kind of a rate break, and yeah. it's not terribly specific about what it is. Um, and and there are things that we could do um, that will be a whole lot less costly. Those people are not our primary interest. So can can just uh, for example, um, using virtual peaker for the same in the same way you dispatch uh, VC dispatches batteries or GMP. I mean, the device control is right there. I mean, you can monitor the thing, and it would allow us to, to um, it would allow us to provide a time of use rate for the for the the charger itself. Totally different topic. Let's go back to the money. If we turn yeah. down the money and we don't have to do it for five years, the five years of savings of a hundred thousand a year the 500,000 we would have gotten by taking the money today. So yeah. we don't really lose all the money. Every year that we don't do it, we get back part of what we would have gotten from them as a grant. So it's not, I wouldn't worry so much about the money. Right, so, so again, um, let's set aside AMI for one second. I don't want to go too far off track, but um, the statute does require you to do either ask for an extension or to put an EV program in place by 2024. So, I mean, we could take no action on this, put put a plan together for you to do the EV rate. And if the PUC accepts it, 
then you're good. Um, if they don't, then you may have to come back to the drawing board as to what else can be done. Um, you know, virtual peaker, whether you want to pay their costs, which I have my own opinion on whether virtual peaker is cost effective or not. That's a whole separate example, conversation. But. I, th I think there are a lot of ways of, of designing a rate that could satisfy the PUC. But designing AMI isn't measuring whether or not you, you're charging your car, other than the fact that there may be something that resembles a demand lo a load that a car would generate. Otherwise, it's just, I mean, it's just reading what the load is. It's not reading what the car is demanding. It could be you've turned on a bunch of, uh, you know, you've turned on a bunch of, uh, I don't know, space heaters or something. You, you do get a pile of data that you can use for 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 rate design in some fashion. Yeah. Um, but doesn't it doesn't it seem bizarre that you got to work for something for about I think at most a hundred electric car owners in our region? It's bizarre. It's going to be more. Oh, it'll be a lot more, but right now it's not many. Well, and and as, as some of us have discussed of late, there are going to be bigger problems with electric car penetration, like right. and 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 the heat pumps and everything else. Right. And, and we don't have a system that is built for that. Um. So. Um, but that's that's a discussion for a different day. I guess what I was just trying to say is something that addresses that specific EV charging uh, issue. Yeah. You know, the, the device, the charger, those chargers have, there have smart connections, you know? I mean, well, I, I, I can control see. everything in, in my house remotely. I I think we've, we've been at this for- well, Impasse. About an hour. <laughs> Maybe more than okay. that. I, I haven't been I haven't been a good timer. I, I my apologies, especially to Nat. Um I think we need to make a decision. Well, I think we have. And unless unless any what what's the time frame, Ken, that, that you need a decision from us? Well, in in all honesty, if if you're deciding not to move forward, I would personally prefer that you take no action. Okay. Does that leaves the door open if something else changes? And, and the fact that you have chosen not to move forward with the contract is itself a decision, <laughs> um, just by not signing anything. Yeah. And I, and I, yeah, that's fine. I mean, if we were going to sign something, I, I had, and it was just my one pass through a lot of comments. Yeah. Well, um, I, I have to leave. Uh, Liz. But I think I think Ken, uh, I think he left. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I I I I think I think that's good advice, Ken. Yeah, time for, time frame wise, um, we're we're getting feedback from others. I mean, everybody got the same set of information that that you got. So, um, hearing from other utilities that have questions or starting the process to get approval. Um, we're going to be filing likely with the Public Utility Commission for those that have chosen to go forward, at least indicated they're going forward, um, probably by mid-May um, to start getting the, the state approvals to, to put the project together. Um, and then we'll move forward with the first tranche. Like I say, Swanton, uh, Enosburg, Orleans, and Northfield have already determined that they want to do the project. Um, so we're, we're using them as the first tranche to move forward. And are, are we responding to anyone other than you? Uh, do we respond to the PUC? Like, and then the reason I ask is because of how it would be drafted. Yeah, I, well, I'm gonna have to re look at the testimony. Um, we're gonna, we will have to clearly call out that uh, Hardwick at the moment has decided not to move forward. 
Um, uh, that, that would or hasn't decided or has de hasn't decided to move forward. Yeah, I that work on <laughs> commitment the, anxiety the right wording of that has not made a commitment, however, we want to phrase it. But, um, I mean, I I'd suggest you keep the door open as long as you can um, and, and see what happens. And we'll we'll move forward with approval for those that are sure they want to go. And then if you want to get added in at the end at some point, then that's fine. We can always make a separate filing. Um, or you can decide once this grant kind of closes out that you're going to go a different direction. Um, but it will it will call the question that was raised earlier is okay if it's ten out of eleven members that go forward what happens to Hardwick's share of the funding and I honestly I don't know as I sit here what what would happen whether the DPS would take it back or have us reallocate it I'm I'm not sure. Well yeah and actually my question was the the inverse of that what if what would Hardwick Electric get any of the proportional balance if other if uh, other utilities FEPSA members didn't. I was thinking of actually getting more money rather than. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's possible, but I, the only member that has raised issues similar to what you have is really Jacksonville and their portion of the funding is not very significant. So I don't think it would change your decision. Does anybody else have anything? Else for Ken, because if not, we've we've kept you here a long time. But this has been very helpful, Ken. Yes, thank you. I appreciate the conversation, and uh, certainly understand what you're struggling with. So, thanks. <laughs> thanks for the uh, thanks, Ken. Oh, thanks, Ken. Thanks, Eli. Thank you. Bye. Okay. The next item is, Mike, you requested an executive session? Yeah, it could be five minutes. <laughs> okay. Um, this is, is this litigation? Is this, I, I, we have to have a motion to go into executive session and I'm just trying to figure out how it needs to be framed so that it's something that we can go into executive session for. Let's call it uh, pending litigation. Okay. Uh, do you want me to make a motion? Sure. I move that we go into executive session to discuss a legal matter, the premature <laughs> disclosure of which could have a prejudicial effect on the interests of Hardwick Electric Department. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay. Um, so as soon as the recording goes off. And we come out of this, are we making a, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, it's it's 7.08 p.m. We are out of executive session. No action was taken. Now, Mike, it's yours. You wanted a, another executive session, yes? Yeah, just talk about a board matter. Okay, I'm not sure what that is. Um, not the easy one. <laughs> a confidential matter? Yes. Okay, um, I move that we go into executive session to discuss a confidential matter. I'm not sure that, the, anyway, um, is there a second? Sorry, second. Okay, so everyone's in favor? Yes? Aye. Okay, so when the recording goes off, it is 7.08 p.m. and we will be in executive session. Um, it is 7.10 p.m. and we are out of executive session. No action was taken. So, so I think on something like that, which is, you know, would be a benefit to Hardwick Electric. I think the thing would be to go, this is my personal view, but I, you know, you're talking about the, 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 management of 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 the entity would be to go to mike and talk to him about it and say you know would you like some help with it you know i'm happy to get in touch and get information and he may say yes or he may say really beth ought to do that or 
you know, um, but we're not, we are, but we're not employees of Hardwick Electric, um, right. you know, um, and I think on something like your example, I, I think, yeah, I would, if, if, if I would talk with Mike about it and see, you know, if he, if he would like your help and then, and then you could, but it's not, that's not a board policy matter. That's, that's just, you know, that's, that's a, that's a, just, you know, there may be some savings there. Um, yeah, and that's just one of, could be a few things. I know Vince has looked at stuff too in the past, but the question is, do we do it as, and, and I, so Mike says, yes, I need the help. Go do it. Do we do it as, Hey, we represent Harbick electric. I don't think you can say that you represent Hardwick Electric, because in our in you know you could if it's a, a matter that you would be bringing to the board, you can certainly say that you're on the board of commissioners and you're seeking some information. But I think I personally think that anytime we do something, we have to be very clear that what we're asking about is we're not acting on behalf of the commission unless the commission has unless the board has has delegated that authority or made a decision okay it's it's, it's, a, it's always a squiggly line that i always feel like we have to cross to figure it out but, but it, I, it, I, sorry go ahead, go go ahead. Ben. i was gonna say i know that you know like uh, I'm always curious about things and I've, I've put in a number of systems and stuff and, and I always make it really clear that I don't represent the board, but as you said, Lana, but I am on the board of commissioners. Uh, if I'm inquiring about a particular subsidy, like you said, Mike, but it being, this is something that I remember briefly uh, talking about with Roger also that, um, you know, whether or not we, we're an activist board uh, I'd, I'd like to think that uh, rather than individual, I mean, individuals <laughs> going out uh, and and finding some funding or some other, you know, some other program or project that's a benefit to the to the utility and the ratepayers, that there would be general kind of board support uh, to do that. It's like you know, oh, that sounds like a good idea. But uh, but, but be, I think you know, I think Mike has to be in the loop. Oh yeah, yeah, and, totally. And, and and you know, some of the stuff. You know, maybe he's already spoken to the person that you're going to be talking to or something. Sure. I, I just, I, I. I, I think this is communication. You know, you know I think, I think in, in a, in a, you know, we're not a corporation. We're, we're, we're a public body. Um, and I, I think you know, in a corporate setting, you know, if, 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 if a board member goes someplace and makes an inquiry about something that's related to their work on the board of, of a particular company, they probably identify themselves as, 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 you know, being on the board of the company, you know, but I, I think there's a difference between getting information and 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 expressing opinions, and I and I'm personally I'm much more concerned about expressing opinions, or giving the impression of of that that the board is taking a position on something. Um, it it's not. It, I don't think it's a you know I don't think there's necessarily a a black and white thing. And maybe, you know, I think with with Nat and Rogers. Well, we should probably have, I think it's a good thing to have a discussion about, and maybe there is, maybe there are some bright lines. And, and Mike, you may have a view on some bright lines, but. Um, well, you know, I, I think it's interesting. I think we should have that discussion. I think, you know, and I remember a year or a few ago that we had some document that kind of defined what we did and what the general manager did and who was responsible for what. And I think maybe we need to revisit that to make sure it's clear. Um, you know, I, because I, I get I confused think, sometimes. No, if there are things, um, I don't think we discussed the issue that, you know, the like the example that you gave. There's just I an example. There's too many different options, but yeah. 
Myself and you've been very quiet. And, and um, this is a board discussion, I thought. And it, I think yeah. it, to your point, uh, uh, Michael, the you know, it, it, I don't want to miss. I feel like I don't want to miss any opportunities. And um, you know, like can, I can see money out there, for example, and. That when you see that, Vince, then send it to Mike. Send it to all of us. Sure, I, I yeah. But and, without getting into a discussion amongst all of us, because we can't. Yeah, I, I agree, and and I guess it's it's been it feels like that's always been kind of the uh, Vets has been the conduit for those things, and that if it didn't come from Vets, uh, it wasn't necessarily going to either be enter not necessarily entertained, but it wasn't like a legitimate source or something. I, I think I think there are different kinds of things. OK, some of the projects and I and I and and I understand your enthusiasm and your curiosity. OK, I, and, and. We are a little. Municipal oh, utility yeah. with with barely, you know, I mean, the reason that we have the discussion that we just had is because we're not going to lose, we're not going to reduce the number of employees because AMI goes in, unlike bigger entities that have more employees and, and, and may well see those benefits. Although, as Ken pointed out, um, that wasn't the case, even though that's what people had thought way back when with a much bigger entity. So, but I think that's a different kind of thing than the question that that Michael Ambrosino is asking, at least in his example, which is where there's a source of of it's not a policy issue. It's a, you know the government says you can get this money back, and you know is this something that we can avail ourselves of? Mm -hmm. Um. And I don't know. I mean, for all I know, you've already filed that paperwork, Mike. No, I filed nothing. I'm no, just... no, I didn't mean you, Mike. I meant Mike oh. Sullivan, Mike. No, he did. He, actually, Mike and I had a, a quick discussion once about accessible money. He's like, he looked into it, but, you know, I think, all right, you know, a lot of people look into things and sometimes you need to push people because things have changed since the last time he's done it. I know some of the stuff I looked at for buildings in New York what was available a year ago versus this year is tremendously different. Same yeah. program, they just changed the rules. And they I know changed the rules. They did stuff. change the rules on that. Yeah. So, so. Uh, the specific project. So, uh, Mike, um, you know, there's a rural. It's a, it's under DOE grants, it, and the uh, the deadlines in another month or so. But that's just for the the concept paper, and it's for rural um, novel pilot rural electrification pilot projects. And, you know, it's an ongoing three or $400 million a year. So I'd like to talk to you about that. And, you know, we can uh, talk about generating something like, like I did for a Crassberry, you know, whether that worked or not, but it, it, it is a creative use of funds. And I can see uh, looking at the uh, federal register notice that Hardwick Electric could benefit hugely from they essentially get a storage project paid for. And, you know, you could have peak shaving discharge, you could have backup, you know, you could have all these benefits. So, I, I mean, just talking about that, I mean- uh, but that's, I, the, that's the kind of thing in the first instance. My suggestion would be send it to everybody, but especially send it to Mike Sullivan and find a time to, to talk to, let him look at it and talk to him and see if this is something that that are thin resources. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I totally yes. I could, I could, could, agree. that it makes sense because doing gr grants, as you know, doing successful grants takes a lot of time. You mean writing them or, or implementing? Right, writing the applications, getting applications through that actually get the money. I've I've written close to a million dollars worth of grants and, that I've gotten, and I, I I'm very good at it even though I just did it as a volunteer or, or for business stuff. So, but I, I agree, I'm, I'm really aware of writing very specifically to the grant and to the audience and, and thinking, extrapolating all the implications of the costs and burdens that are associated with 
with fulfilling with all the reporting requirements and everything else exactly. I, I, but we, again this is i get excited i i, I understand <laughs> that but it's also 720 and no, and sorry, i don't want to get into a yeah, yeah. discussion me, about doing grants right now yeah um let me just finalize by saying because we, we don't want to it's already 720 um i'll try and find that document i had about general manager commissioners and distributes everyone can look at it. and that's the discussion we should have, I think, with everybody just to make sure we're all in the same boat uh, uh, as to who does what and when. Um, but yeah, I guess it's still a bit murky when you can do stuff when you can't. It's, it's better than it was 10 minutes ago in my mind. Uh, and I will work with Mike with stuff I find and I'll distribute and we'll, we'll do it a step at a time and see how it goes. Thanks for bringing it up. But I know Vin, and, and I say I, I want to do it, but I know Vince is the most prolific at doing this because he likes to look at everything. Thank you, Vince. <laughs> uh, it gets distracting. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I am going, if we're, if we're done with that item, I'm going to suggest that we park the executive session that was at the end of the agenda. And, yep. and take it up at, at the next meeting because uh, I I would, I, it's a discussion that I would like everybody to be involved in and um, and I'm also tired. <laughs> it's 7.23. We got out of here before 7.25. It's a home run night. <laughs> um, so is there a motion to adjourn? Are we not going to do the general manager's report oh. Oh. for financials? That wasn't on the agenda, actually. So no, I, we're not. Okay. Uh, I I did have one. Well, now that you bring it up, I did. By the way, it wasn't in the packet. It was in the online one, but it wasn't in the um, in the printed copy that you handed me, Mike. It may have just been the collating on that particular. I apologize one. then. Oh gosh, you know, page missing. What you know? That's um, I'm just looking for. There was something in the in the general manager's report that I had a question about. Where I just I'm trying to scroll to it. Maybe maybe it wasn't a question actually. No no it wasn't a. Oh I know what it was. It wasn't on the. It was it was in the. Um, the accounts payable, the general ledger, ledger stuff. Okay. Um, and and this may predate Vince and Mike, uh, but I, I, I recall that um, when uh, larger amounts were spent by Mike Sullivan, that we would at least raise it and talk about it just to make sure that there, and so I don't think there is an issue. But there were a couple of arresters and some wire that are listed as as your purchases, or actually you're being paid for it. So you must have bought the stuff. Right. So I, for example, yeah. the arresters, Lynn, we're doing a a retrofit of what we call flip fuses. They were a very inexpensive uh, protection method for distribution transformers in the late '60s, early '70s. And we still have quite a pile of them out there and they're next to impossible to uh, refuse a transformer unless you climb the pole or have a bucket truck. Whereas with a cutout, you can utilize a hot stick from the ground and within a few minutes be on your way and the power's back on. So we're, we're retrofitting all of those. And in doing that, the flip fuses and the lightning arrestor on the transformer are one unit. So that's getting thrown out. Plus the arrestor is an old silicon carbide, very old and poor technology. So we're replacing the flip fuse with a cutout and adding a new polymer arrestor, which costs, I think, $105 a piece. And I paid, I think, $35 a piece for those. I bought them and I put in for reimbursement for them. But, but why, why, why isn't it bought with with 
Yeah. You so with an, invo with an invoice with, from the company that sold them. That's 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 my question. I had I mean, it was interesting why we were why you were getting them. But that I, I wasn't questioning that. Um, and I'm not really questioned, but I. So I would have I would have historically like the time you're talking before Mike and Vince thrown them on the company credit card. But since Beth joined us and Beth will attest to this, the company credit card is an absolute nightmare. We don't have even, we don't even know the passwords to get into the account, to look at things and they won't give us the passwords. So I just stopped using it and started using my card for those type of purchases. And then I put in for reimbursement with the invoice, et cetera. Okay. Is there any way when this is done to say who it was purchased from? In other words, it so where it says like metering wire or arresters, if it's, you know, if it said, Invoice number, bloody blah, blah from. We can add that, no company. problem. Sure. Not a problem. Um, because because then it because otherwise it looks peculiar. Sure. You know, was this from your personal arrestor collection? <laughs> no, I don't have those. <laughs> <laughs> I might have a couple substation arresters kicking around here, though. <laughs> okay, that was. That was my. That was that was the only thing. I did, and, and, what, and we and we are supposed to go through those every month. We have not been as religious as we should. That was that was. Um, it looks like you still have a couple minutes. I just I'm going to beat this dead horse. I, has Mike uh, Farman gotten to the wheeling charge contract? Steve Farman. No, oh. Steve Farman. Sorry. No, okay, because that's just money flying out the door. I, I don't know. Is do can we get someone else to draft it? I mean, it. it uh, perhaps, uh, yeah. I'll 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 find out about that. Because it it really is. It wouldn't be the next best person at Vepsa would be Amanda, and she's really kind of being mentored by Steve. Um, so I'll have to ask Ken if there's another source we could get somebody to take a look at that. Right. The I thing is. That. The thing is, Mr. Farman's done it before. He has all the structure for it. He did it with Enosburg, and he just needs to get, you know, a few weeks free. He's in the middle of four rate cases right oh, now. Yeah. So. It's still, it's true, but it's it's been uh, around a year. You're, you're right, too. You're right, too. I mean, it's good money being thrown out the window. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's that's an item... We should talk about the policy also next time. So on, yeah. on debt financing and, and just, um, and as long as we're talking about debt financing, um, there's some concern at the select board um, about who needs to approve um, HED's debt. Um, and there appears to be a difference in, in view legally. Um, so, um, and while I hear that, that their, their concern, the concern that was expressed is we need to be following the law and the view was that that select board needs to approve any debt that we incur before we incur it. That's that's at least the chair of the select board's view. And, and but that's not what our attorney's view is. Yeah. Um, and well, and and they're attorney's view is what well, we haven't seen anything anyhow that's that's out there so i just wanted people to be aware that that's out there and uh, if we were going forward with the ami we would have had to we would be confronting that head on uh -oh. but uh -oh. Uh -oh. quick, quick yeah. note mike i gotta get in touch with you about uh stuff for the uh select board meeting on thursday okay. no problem is there a motion to adjourn it's now 7 30. I make, make a motion, motion to adjourn. <laughs> Hearing no objection, <laughs> we are adjourned at 731. Good night. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all. Good night. night. Thank you.